In this video, we're going to look at uh, the ambiguous case, which is a situation that arises when you try to use the law of sines. The question we're going to look at is uh, solve the triangle ABC, and the given data is uh, one angle, alpha is equal to 35 degrees, and two side lengths, uh, A is equal to 10, and B is equal to 13. And the key thing to note about this is that you have both alpha and A, right? So you have this sort of matching letter, one in Greek, one in Latin. And let's first, before doing anything else, look at a picture of what we have so far. So it's hard in general to picture this information. I think the, the first thing to do is to draw a triangle. Uh, let's label the vertices A, B, and C. And let's just kind of keep in mind that even though we've drawn something, our picture could be uh, a little bit deceptive until we figure out what's going on a little bit more. But nonetheless, it helps to have a picture so that we can start taking the information we have and labeling it in the appropriate places, right? So I hope this picture looks okay, that the angle alpha appears near the vertex A, and then the A and B, which are given, so we know what they are, are labeled in the appropriate places. And um, this ambiguous case that we're about to study, uh, that's this situation. And it occurs when you're given an angle, like here, uh, alpha, and you have two sides, which are on one side of the angle. Now, that sounds a little confusing, but what I mean is on one side of this angle is over here, this B. And then if you continue along this way, you get the, this other next side, A. Um, to say this a different way, a little bit more the way the book says it, is that you get two sides, like A and B here, and you get an angle that's opposite one of them. So that's this angle alpha. So that's what I pointed out in the previous slide, that you have both A and alpha. And a different way to say this, just really short, is if you run around, you get side, side, and angle. So here it is, side, side, and then the immediate angle that follows after. So this is called the SSA case. And so we, here's what goes wrong in a sense. So why this is called the ambiguous case. Here uh, we've labeled um, the angle alpha 35 degrees and one side is length 13, that's B. And then the other side that comes off of here, uh, this was length 10, but uh, because the picture is a little deceptive, I haven't labeled uh, that side, I haven't even drawn it in. But if uh, we were to imagine starting to draw this in. Of course, what you see here, uh, this is not length 10 at all, at least if this is length 13. Um, so we need to draw in something of the appropriate length, but let's not do this yet. The key point is this, is that we don't know what the angle is right here at C, right? So this angle gamma is not known, and that means that the particular bend that occurs here right now is not necessarily accurate. So it could look like this, or maybe it's a little bit over that way, or a little bit more, or a little bit more, or a little more. We're not quite sure, right? How much it goes in each of, I mean, how much it swings uh, more or less. So even though the angle is not known, um, if we pick the correct angle, and the, the, the problem really is that there are two angles. But if we get one of the right angles and we draw this segment of the correct length, 10 here, uh, then that, that segment will end on this blue line right here. Okay, And so we have to get one of the two magic angles when this will occur. So we have to actually answer this question down here. What points are exactly 10 units away from this point C, yet they're also on this blue line? And a different way to say this is, starting at this point C, let's draw on a circle of radius 10 and see where it crosses this blue line, which is what we're going to do in the next slide. So let's start at C and draw 10 units away. We would get a circle like this. It will end up crossing uh, the blue line at these two points. By the way, another example we looked at in class was when the radius of the circle starting at C is too small. then then the, the dotted circle wouldn't even cross the blue line at all. Uh, but that's not the case we're looking at here. There are these two points. Let's label them. And the point is this, that um, either of these two points here can end up being B because both of these points are, can be the vertex B. And the reason is that either of these points are the right distance away from C and still for, uh, force that the angle at alpha is correct. So let's remove that circle, and something we're going to use in an upcoming, uh, so 
Here is one of the triangles that we're looking at. This will be called the first triangle. And notice that here, uh, for B, this angle is acute. And the other triangle we'll look at is over here. And now the angle over here at B, called beta, is now an obtuse angle. And we're actually going to look at one other thing in an upcoming slide. So let's just draw this in here. This triangle right here uh, that uses the two different vertices B is actually an isosceles triangle. And this is because um, both of these sides are the same length, right? They're namely length 10. Uh, so we have this isosceles triangle, which actually means that this angle right here is the same as this angle over here. OK, so here are our two triangles. The triangle on the left will be the first triangle we study, and then here's the second one. And based on what we saw in the previous picture with that yellow isosceles triangle, uh, the angles uh, over here, this first beta angle and this second one, those angles have to be supplementary. They'll add up to 180 degrees. And you can see that when you look at the previous picture. So let's start with that first triangle, apply the law of sines to it. We have alpha, we have a, we have b, but we don't have beta. So we can set up uh, one part of the law of sines here, plug in what we know. And uh, to solve for sine of beta, you get 13 sine of 35 degrees uh, all over 10. And then beta is found by applying sine inverse to this fraction right here. And here's the part where we do have to be careful. The point is that sine inverse always gives you an output which is between negative 90 degrees and positive 90 degrees. And this is what we want right now. So our picture even shows us this, that the angle beta uh, is acute. And so it's good because sine inverse here, the output we get is a number that's less than 90 degrees. So we'll use this right here. And this is all you can do without a calculator. That's an exact answer for beta. But if you punch that into a calculator, you get about 48 degrees. Then we can get gamma. Um, and since we now know the angle beta, all we have to do to get gamma is subtract away the other two angles we have from 180 degrees. As far as an exact answer, uh, here's one right here. The only other exact answer you could give was just would be to just simplify this 180 degrees minus 35 degrees. And if you punch this into a calculator, you'll get that gamma is equal to 96, 97 degrees almost. All right. And um, from knowing gamma, uh, we can actually set up the law of sines again, right? So uh, all we do here is do this sine of alpha over A, just like we saw over here. And on the right side, sine of gamma over C. And what is gamma? Gamma is everything from this left parenthesis all the way over to this right parenthesis. And that just copies what's right here. Now, we won't solve for C here. I'm sure you can. Um, this is par perhaps the easiest part of the task, right? You can solve for C in this. I'd like to move on uh, to what goes wrong and how we have to be careful when we look at the second triangle. So here's a picture of the second triangle. Um, here's this angle beta, which is actually obtuse. And let's just recall this. Uh, sine inverse always returns an output between negative 90 degrees and positive 90 degrees. The beta that we saw previously uh, was smaller than 90 degrees. That's what you'd get if you apply sine inverse. But that's not good because we're looking for an obtuse angle beta, right? And that means we want an answer that's between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. And to figure out what we need to do, remember that the two different angles beta, one from each triangle we're looking at, they are supplementary, meaning they add up to 180 degrees. So if we're looking at some angle over here called beta, then the remaining angle would be the rest that you have to get up to 180 degrees. Or if you were to draw that angle in standard position, it would end up somewhere over in the second quadrant. And in fact, the two beta angles you're looking at, not only are they supplementary, but they actually have the same reference angle. Meaning that if sine of the one angle is a half, then sine of the other angle would also be a half. And we're going to take advantage of this fact that sine is going to give us the same value for both of those, right? We're going to take advantage of these reference angles. And we can do this whether the angle is a special angle on the unit circle like this, or just any old angle. All right, so let's just recall this. We computed uh, the beta angle in the first triangle as sine inverse of uh, 13 sine 35 degrees all over 10. And so we can, I mean, th this was called beta before, but since we have another angle beta coming up, let's call this beta acute. 
Now, in our triangle, uh, the new beta that we want is the old beta, but the supplementary angle. So we'll take our old angle that we found and subtract it away from 180 degrees, right? So all we do is this B acute here, we replace it with this expression that we first computed, and our new beta angle, this obtuse angle, is 180 degrees minus sine inverse of this old thing, right? This is just substituting from up here. So let's now use that as our beta uh, to figure out all of the other sides of this triangle that we need. So we still have this law of sines here, and we can use either the old beta, beta acute, or the new beta, but uh, we'll just see a little bit of the setup from here that the beta we need is taken by subtracting away our previous beta acute answer uh, from sine inverse because we wanted an answer that's between 90 degrees, bigger than 90 degrees, and smaller than 180 degrees. So like we saw in the previous slide, our new beta is 180 degrees minus sine inverse of 13 sine of 35 degrees over 10. So we have our beta here, and if you actually crunch this into a calculator, you will get 131.79 degrees. That is definitely an obtuse angle right over here. Uh, now that we have alpha and we have beta, we can get gamma. Right? Gamma is now found by subtracting away the other two angles from 180 degrees. Uh, it, the answer doesn't look very nice here, right? It's 180 degrees minus one of the angles. Here's alpha, 35 degrees, minus beta, which was this whole thing right here. So we just subtract it away, threw it in a set of parentheses because of order of operations issues. And, you know, this is a decent exact answer, but we can write a little bit more uh, by distributing this minus sign here. So we notice that I would make this positive 180 degrees negative, and that will end up canceling with this. It'll make this negative sine inverse of whatever positive. Uh, so when these 180s cancel, uh, a different way to write gamma here, this angle gamma, would simply be uh, sine inverse of 13 sine of 35 degrees over 10, then minus this 35 degrees that's right here. Okay, so this is an exact answer for gamma. Again, both of these are very good exact answers for gamma. This is just perhaps a little bit more sane to punch into a calculator. When you do that, you get about 13 degrees. And now that we know what gamma is, um, again, with this exact answer, if you don't have a calculator, you'd have to use this. We can use the law of sines to set up the sine alpha over A is equal to sine of gamma, meaning this thing right here, over C to find that third side that we don't know. So that's what it looks like, right? This is sine of alpha over A, sine of, and then everything in the parentheses here is gamma, and this is over C. Now, it would be um, tempting to try to cancel the sine and sine inverse, but we can't do that here simply because there's this minus 35 degrees as well. So uh, what's left to do uh, in solving for C? You multiply by C on both sides, uh, then multiply by the reciprocal here. So multiply by 10 over sine of 35 degrees on both sides, and you get some big mess. Yeah, right, but C will equal uh, 10 times sine of the quantity sine inverse of 13 sine of 35 degrees over 10 minus 35 degrees, then all over this over here, the sine of 35 degrees. And that's how you solve for C.